Today in this lecture, we will continue to see the topic of certainties. As we have seen in the previous lectures, Section 6 of the Trusts Ordinance provides that a trust is created when the author of the trust indicates with reasonable certainty by words or act of the following an intention to create the trust, purpose of the trust, beneficiary, finally, trust property. When we see the intention to create the trust, a trust is created when the author of the trust indicates with the reasonable certainty by words or act the intention on his part to create thereby a trust. That is the section 6A of the Trusts Ordinance. We have seen certain moral obligations. What is a moral obligation? If the property transferred to one person, there may be some obligations imposed on such person. That is a mere moral obligation. But there may be formal and fiduciary obligations on a person to whom the property transferred. In that, circum in that circumstance, we have seen two cases. One is known as Visala Chipilai versus Sivahami Ammal. In other case, we have seen R. Muhammad versus Velupulla Periyadambi case. In Visala Chi versus Sivahami Ammal case, there was a deed of gift and also donor shall have the power to sell or mortgage or otherwise alienate such property. In addition to that, there were some words known as absolutely forever appeared in the deed, deed of uh, gift. That means it was given to such person absolutely forever. There is no such obligation on that person. But when they interpret, as I told you earlier, when we interpret the document, we should not interpret the words in isolation. We must interpret the whole document. Therefore, in this document also, when they see that uh, there were some other words appeared in that uh, deed, actually uh, the words like uh, out of the said lands and premises and performed and satisfy out of the property, when you see all these words, the court held that a trust has been created. But R. Mwampile case, the property given by deed of gift, but there are some conditions. When you see the conditions here, first one, the said VS, that's the name of the person, shall look after the property and takes rent and profits profits. And there were two other conditions in addition to this one to perform pujava in the, uh, in the temple standing thereon and also required 
the festival should be done in the temple. Then the court held that there was no such trust created by that uh, words, but those are conditions. Now, agency Fernando J cited this Armoumbilla versus Velopulla Periodambi case and said that the deed in question transferred a land by way of donation and on the account of natural affection for the donee who was entitled by its terms to take the rents and profits of the land. There was, there was a condition also that the donor should perform certain puja and also certain festival in the temple. But the Vijayavatana J was unable to find any evidence as to whether or not the performance of certain these uh, ceremonies or puja would involve any expenditure. No, was the donee enjoined to utilize any part of the income for the purpose of those ceremonies and festivals? Then the court held that the conditions were insufficient to create the trust, being presumably more in the nature of pious desire on the part of the donor than the expression of intention to impose an obligation annex to the property, annex to the ownership. Then what we have learned from this case, there are conditions or there may be conditions which amount to create the trust. Sometime it may not be. Therefore, we must see case by case and decide whether there is an intention to create the trust. Now we will see the Harrison and another versus Gibson and others. The testator made a homemade will and he said, the bungalow I leave in trust for my wife, on her death, the bungalow is to be sold and cash raised is to be equally divided between the children. The court held that the wording of bequest created an express trust, not a gift. In this case, what we have learned, one side, I live in trust for my wife. That's one thing we must take into account when you interpret the intention of the author of the trust. And second thing, the bungalow is to be sold and cash raised is to be equally divided between the children. Then we must apply section 6 and see whether there is a trust. In this one also, when you apply, first thing is we must identify the intention of the settler to create the trust. I live in trust for my wife and the bungalow is to be sold and cash raised is to be equally divided between the children. It amounts to the trust. That means this is sufficient to create or sufficient to show the intention to create the trust. We Adams and Kensington Vestry. A testator left the property to his wife by will in full confidence. 
you must remember when we study this illustration to section 6 we have seen the first one in confidence here also the testator left the property to his wife by will in full confidence that she will do what was the right by his children. Even though the full confidence that, that may be a predatory word, but it does not create the trust. Because the property left to the wife, then she will do something. Therefore, the court held that property passed to the wife absolutely and no trust has had been created. Komeski case, Komeski versus uh, Bowring Canberra case. In this case, the testator left the property to his wife in full, full confidence, again full confidence. She will devise it one or more my nieces as she may think fit. The court held that this appeared to be merely a moral implication, uh, obligation on the wife. However, House of Lord held that the trust has been created. When you see these two cases, Adam's case and Komiski case, in Adam's case, the court said that more or less similar facts, court said that the property transferred to wife absolutely, then there is no trust. But in Komiski case, the court said that trust had been created. That's why some authors, English authors, specified that because if the property given to a wife and ask the wife to give the property to children, that will go because the mother will have all these uh, care about these children. But in the second case, Komeski case, the property given to the wife, but it should go to the my nieces, the husband nieces. That's why court held that there's a little bit difficult situation whether the wife will devolve this property to the nieces. Therefore, the court decided to impose a trust on the situation. Whatever it is, this is because the entire instrument must be construed. You must look at the whole document, not just phrase in, or phrase or words in isolation. Later words indicated that it was intention of the settler that a legally enforceable trust should be created and not just a moral obligation. So a trust may be, a trust was created because having expressed that the property would be dealt with in full confidence looking like a moral obligation. Settler so went on to say that he directs that the property should be held on trust. So this showed that there was not just moral obligation, there's an intention to create the trust. Midland Bank versus Viet case, Mr. Viet settled his family home on trust for the benefit of his wife and daughter. Why he has done like this, so as to immunize 
it for any business failure he might suffer. Now the intention here, when you, when you emphasize these words, what they are used here, the husband settled the family home on trust for the benefit of his wife and daughter. Why he has done to immunize it from any business failure that might suffer in future. When his business did fail, he sought to protect his house from creditors by relying on the settlement early executed of which his wife was a trustee. It emerged that Mr. Wirt's wife had had no knowledge of effect or nature of the declaration she he signed as trustee. Then the court held that there was a sham and the declaration of trust was void and could not be enforced because the husband for the purpose of protecting the property he has created a trust not for the purpose of not with the intention to create the trust that's why the court held that there was a sham and declaration of trust was void, void. Because the intention is not to create the trust. Where a trustee goes along with the with a settler, neither knowing or caring what he or she is signing, this constitutes sufficient intention to create a sham, not the trust. Now the first one we have seen the, in, the, in the intention to create the trust, we have seen the difference between the moral obligation and fiduciary obligation. Now we will see express trust on inference by quotes. Paul versus Constance, 1 WLR, 527. In the case of Paul versus Constance, Mr. Constance left his wife to live with his mistress, Mrs. Paul. Constance received a court award of uh, 950 sterling pounds for an injury suffered at work subsequent to which Constance and Paul decided to set up a joint bank account. After visiting the bank, they were advised that the account should be set up in the name of Constance alone because the couple were not married. Therefore, Constance was the common law owner of the account. The 950 sterling pounds lump sum was paid into the account and formed the bulk of the money held in it. The couple also added joint bingo win winnings to the account and used some of the money to pay for joint holiday. Importantly, the evidence was also adduced at trial that the Constance 
had said to the Paul, this is very important wordings, this money is as much as much yours as mine. Once again, I read these uh, words that he has spoken at the time of opening account. This money is as much yours as mine. Thereafter, Constance died. His wife sought to claim that the bank account belonged entirely to her deceased husband and that it therefore passed to her as his widow under intestacy rules. Paul argued that money was held on trust by Constance as legal owner of the bank account for both Constance and Paul as the beneficiaries. Therefore, Paul argued the bank account should pass to her as sole surviving beneficiary. The court held that Constance had declared a trust over the money in the bank account Reasoning was that the words, the money is as much yours as mine, manifested sufficient intention that Constance hold that property on trust for them both. For the, furthermore, that the couple had treated the money in the account as joint money was evidence of intention to create the trust. An interesting point arises from this case as an example of the law of express trust. The court held that the trust was an express trust even though in the words of the court, Constance was a man of unsophisticated character who did not know he was creating a trust. In other words, you can create an express trust without knowing that there is a legal concept of trust. Instead, the court will consider your conduct and your real intention in deciding whether or not you can be taken to have intended the creation of trust. The court said that the words Constance did use that the money was as much hers as his convey clearly a present declaration that existing fund was as much plaintiffs as his own. Then as we have seen, the trust may be created by words spoken at the time of execution of deed. Here also, the Constance, when he opened the account, he spoke, he has spoken certain words which amounts to the trust because it clearly indicates the intention of the author of the trust. That we have seen already, then we will move to next one. Yes, this also we have seen. Then go to the next case. Lambe versus Enemus. In this case, the words were said by the said that property was to be at her disposal. In any way, she may think best for the benefit of herself and family. It was held that not to create the trust as the words are clearly progatory. There is no intention to create the trust. 
to create the valley trust you must show you must show a clear intention to do so now what we have seen up to now first we have seen moral obligation and trust moral obligation and fiduciary obligations always the fiduciary obligations create a trust because there is an intention to create the trust then thereafter we have seen certain issues here that we have seen now there are we have seen the cases also the express trust based on inference by courts now we will see decision based on surrounding circumstances jones versus lock this is very interesting case a father return from the business trip and he was scolded by his wife for not bringing back a present for his uh, infant son in what appears to have been a fit of peak he went up upstairs and wrote a check out in favor of himself as a pay came back downstairs shouted look you hear i give this to this baby and thrust the check into the baby's hand the issue arose whether there was a trust created over the check or the money represented by the check for the benefit of the baby it was found that there had not been a perfect gift of the check because it was made out in the father's name without having been endorsed in favor of the baby the court held it further that there was nothing to indicate an intention to create the trust of the check rather father's intention was either to make a gift or simply make a point to his wife the court found that the argument for trust was merely attempt merely an attempt to circumvent the failure to make an effective gift by advancing an argument for a trust therefore the court held that this imperfect gift could not be made effective by other means other means this principle appears mostly or most clearly from the words of just jessel lord j in richards versus delbridge in 1874 case in the richards versus delbridge where he held that if failed deposition if a failed disposition is intended to take effect by transfer oh, sorry by transfer or gift the court will not hold the intended transfer to operate as declaration of trust for then every imperfect instrument would be made effect, effectual by being converted into a perfect trust in this case the businessman decided to transfer his business to a member of his family and so to demonstrate that uh, this intention by an endorsement to the lease 
over the business premises. The gift was never perfected and therefore it was argued unsuccessfully in favor of the proposed transferring that the business should be treated as having been held on trust for him. The, but the court held that failed gifts would not be affected by any other means of inferring an intention to create the trust. Then what we have seen in these two cases, there is an imperfect transaction. The check just given but it was in father's name. In other case, he agreed or he, he had an intention to write or to transfer the property, but he didn't do that. But if it is not completed transaction, then there can't be a trust. Now we will see in commercial matters or commercial context, what is happening in commercial matters. This is one of the case here we must see. In the case of Don King versus Warren, the Don, Mr. Don King was the leading boxing promoter in USA and Warren was the leading boxer and manager in Jura. The two men formed a partnership agreement whereby they and their companies which they controlled agreed to exploit agreements with the boxer in Jura for their mutual advantage. Now one person from USA, other person from Europe. Both get together to get, earn money for their mutual advantage. They form a partnership. Then all the agreement or management agreement or performance or whatever it is, all the profit, all the money, whatever earned, that should come to the partnership. Under the partnership agreement, each partner was required to hold the benefit of the partnership. Subsequently, one or more of the partners attempt to terminate partnership agreement and so to argue that certain management agreements did not fall to be included in the partnership property. The question arose whether the partners held benefit of their management agreement on trust for partnership. Then the court held that the intention of the parties had been to hold the benefit derived from any contract and that the benefit received by, from them could be subject matter of the trust, that is the trust property and that the partnership arrangement evinced sufficient intention to create the trust. Re K. Ford case, in this case party's treatment was, party's treatment of the property segregating into separate bank account led to the court to decide that the best understanding of the company's intention was to declare trust in favor of customers who had made prepayments. Now in this case, there was an online business. If the people, the customers, when they order for any goods, they must pay together with the orders. Then the company after some time realized some time it may go for go to insolvency. Therefore, 
to protect their customers, they agreed to open a separate bank account to deposit the money, whatever they received, together with orders. Once the goods delivered to that customers, then the money withdrawn from that bank, bank account. After the bank uh, company collapsed, then the customers argued that whatever in the bank account created a trust. The courts then held that the best understanding of the company's intention was to declare trust in favor of customers who had paid prepayment. Now we will see certainty of object matter, object and beneficial. Now the first place we have seen intention to create the trust. Then we have seen obligation, fiduciary obligation surrounding circumstances in which the court will decide. Now, here we will see certainty of object and beneficiary. Object or purpose of the trust must be certain and capable of being rendered certain. Certainty of beneficiary implies two things. Firstly, beneficiary should be identifiable. Secondly, the interest which the beneficiaries take should be ascertainable. That's why in 2018, amendment to the trust ordinance substituted the definition for beneficiary. In terms of 2018 amendment trust ordinance, the beneficiary means a person or a defined and definitely ascertainable class of persons for whose benefit the confidence is accepted. Now, it's more clear now, beneficiary must be a person, fine, if not defined or definitely ascertainable group of persons. In Clayton versus Ramsden case, property was left to the settler's daughter and the trust would be invalid if she married a man not of Jewish faith or whatever. She subsequently married a non-Jewish man the court held that the judgment given by Lord Atin said that condition subsequent here was void for uncertainty. Therefore, daughter could benefit from the trust. Because what is the meaning of Jewish faith? The man not Jewish faith. Then these are the words which are not clear. Therefore, the court said that daughter is entitled to get the benefit of the trust. This is the case where we can see the trust property especially, but at the same time we can see see the object also. A manufacturer of John supplied a clothes manufacturer with John. Then one side manufacturer of John, other side manufacturer of clothes. Then the manufacturer of John supplied the John to the manufacturer of clothes. Clothes manufacturer used 
the jan to make clothes. That is, the jan ceases to exit as jan, but rather became cloth, which was incorporated into the clothes. I would like to give an example here. One side clay suppliers, other side pots producers or manufacturers. Once the clay supply to the pot manufacturer or producer, the pot producer produces pots. Then you can't see the clay there because the pot is there, not the clay. Likewise here also, John given to the cloth manufacturer. Now cloth manufacturer manufactured clothes. The John you can see but is in the but it is in the cloth. The supplier wanted a security for the contractual payment made to it by clothes manufacturer. Therefore, supplier wanted to retain title in the John until it was used to create the clothes and then to have a rights in the clothes themselves. One extent, you can see certain extent it is correct, it can be done. Supplier wanted to retain the title in the John until it was used to create a clothes, that's fine. But after production of or manufacturing of these clothes, you can't see the jan at all. Then how can you how can you have the right on this one? That aim was incorporated into the contract between the parties. Subsequently, clothes manufacturer did go into the insolvency without having made full payment to the suppliers. The suppliers argued that the jan and the clothes were held on trust for it until such time as it received payment. But it was held that if more people claims than there, there was property to go around, trust would have been meaningless because no claimant would have identified which property was held on trust for them alone. Because John given by different people, different suppliers. Suppose A, B, C, D supplied the John to the producer, clothes producer. Now clothes is there. But how can you identify the jan here? There is no way to identify the jan. It is important that the which is, which is to be held on trust is clearly identifiable and segregated from all other property. That's very... Now jan, you can't identify, you can't see the jan. That's first thing, you are not in a position to identify the jan. And second thing is, you must be able to segregate from other property. That cannot be done because cloth is there. Therefore, this is like a merely a charge created under these circumstances, not a trust. The uncertainty of beneficiaries involves three matters as to who may be the beneficiary, maybe for the students, low students, poor people, that's the beneficiary. As to identity of beneficiary, ABC of the law college students, or maybe ABXYZ of this uh, orphanage or whatever. Then as to the identity of the beneficiary by name. Then finally, whether the interest taken by each of the beneficiary, beneficiaries are indicated with certainty. Then first of all, we must identify the beneficiary. Then 
by name we must identify them then finally we must identify the beneficial interest how much of beneficial interest are we are we are going to give to the to them trust is created when the author of the trust indicates with a reasonable certainty by words so acts at mm, the purpose of the trust that's a section 9 paragraph c of the trust ordinance not the 9 the 6c of the trust ordinance there's a mistake a trust is valid if it can be construed as being to or for the present members of the society you know we have studied the property to rule and perpetual succession under 106 110 of the trusts ordinance if it is included future member it would be void for uncertainty and for perpetuity unless the future members are to be ascertained within the perpetual period always trust is created for the present members of the society not future unborn child and everything no that cannot be done anthony gasper versus bishop of jaffna the trust property was a land adjacent to the sea so with a shed built on it to enable the beneficiaries and the trust who were fishermen to keep their boats on the land and to store their fishing tackle in the shed it is apparent that there was not limited to the present members and was intended to endure indefinitely this is submitted that reasonable certainty required by section 6 was not present because beneficiaries included future members and members of the community constitute an unassertainable group but the court held that just community of person can hold the property or acquire the rights in the property so also a community of persons can be beneficiaries under trust deed no person no provisions of the trust ordinance invalidates the trust and there is no reason why it should not be prevailed now in this case and on Gaspar versus bishop of jaffna there was a community the fisheries community living in a area and those community are were the beneficiaries of that trust then the court held that when you see this fisheries community specifically you can identify the persons living in such community therefore the trust is valid but in kandasami versus kumara sagaran case the antoni case was distinguished an an unin, unincorporated society not being a juris person has no legal capacity to acquire the property accordingly the sale of immovable property in favor of an unincorporated society or the association cannot pass title if it is not clear whether the transferer meant to benefit present members of the society as individual or to benefit the society as quasi corporation if it is for and if there's a gift simply you see that there's a gift for unincorporated body or society then really speaking unincorporated body in the sense such organization has no legal entity at all 
then the members there should be the le uh, natural persons are there. Then what we should do is if the property is given to the unincorporated body, then who are the beneficiaries? That's a difficult to identify the beneficiaries. Then Veera Surya is cited here. I don't think the dictum amounts to more than the individual members comprising the community. Not the community as distinct entity can hold or acquire the rights in the property. In Kantasami case, trust for unincorporated society was held to be void because we don't know who are the beneficiaries. We don't know who are the members of this unincorporated body. Because if it is incorporated body, either under Companies Act or by an Act of Parliament, then there must be a register maintained by such organization. Then when you see the register, you can identify the number of members and names and address and everything. But if it is an unincorporated body, then there is no register at all. You don't know who are the beneficial, who are the members there by which you can you can identify the beneficiaries of, of this organization. But in English case, Leakey versus AG, it was held that the gift to the unincorporated body was prima facie gift to the individual members. Then in the English case, it's clearly said that today, if the gift is given to the unincorporated body, it is for the benefit of members who are there today only, not to the future members. Sabavadi versus Muhammad Yusuf case, the document is a will and in interpreting this will, one must give full effect to the intention of testator. Beyond the prohibition of alienation, which sometime occurs in Fide Commissa, there are no words in the will to show that the testator intended to create a Fide Commissa. On contrary, the word trust is used. The English law of trust was the part of Law of Ceylon in 1872. The object of the trust should not be of nameless character, must be of such nature that a court can administer it. Then always the object, object of the trust must be clear enough to identify it or administer it. In Indian case, Muthuswami case, Muthuswami Naidu case, a trust for feeding poor on certain specific day has been held to be sufficiently precise and certain object of the value trust. Finally, we will see in the case of Andoni Gaspar and Bishop of Jaffna, the Basanaika J held that the community of person can hold the property and acquire the rights in property. In the same way, the community of person can be beneficiaries under trust deed. This is not disputed that the defendant belong to a class of person for whose benefit the land has been provided. There is no provision in the trust ordinance which invalid invalidate the trust created and also there is no reason why it should not prevail. When you see this case, very clear idea is we must be able to identify the beneficiaries and ascertainable the beneficiary. That's why in the reason amendment, beneficiary mean a person who identifiable, definitely identifiable or ascertainable group of people. 
then we will stop with this one now. We will continue in other lectures. Thank you.